Welcome if this is your first time here. Welcome back if you've seen any of my other videos. Today I'm gonna to give you 10 quick watercolor tips that can make a difference in your paintings today. Okay, tip number one, use the right size brush. In a way, watercolor is a little bit like golf. The less strokes that you need, the better off that you're gonna be. The less brush strokes you use, the more fresh your painting is gonna look. A good way to use less brush strokes is to use the right size brush. So if you're painting a large area in your scene, make sure that you are using a brush that's big enough. Quick tip number two, if you're painting vertical lines, like say you're painting the mast of a ship or a boat, turn your painting sideways to paint that straight vertical line. And this is helpful for a few different reasons. Painting sideways like that is a more natural movement than pulling up and down with your arm. This can be helpful if you're painting something like power poles or signs or a mast of a ship or a boat, something where you need a vertical line, turn your paper sideways. It always looks more fresh if you can paint it in one brush stroke versus slowly and cautiously painting it up and down. Tip number three, don't draw too light. When you are drawing for your watercolor, you are creating kind of a roadmap for your painting. And what tends to happen, and I still do this sometimes myself, after I paint my first wash, my sky, a little bit of the colors around the scene, I've sometimes covered up my drawing and I've lost my way. And the drawing is important because it helps us to maintain proper perspective in our scene. If you're painting more complicated shapes, such as cars, figures, things that need to be kind of exact, your drawing is important in those scenarios as well. So you wanna make sure that your drawing is strong enough that you can see it after you've painted your first wash of your painting. Okay, tip number four is just the opposite of that. Don't draw too dark. Now, the opposite can happen if you draw some lines that are too dark in delicate areas of your painting, such as the sky, then when you go back in with your clouds, you're going to leave some harsh lines maybe that you didn't want. Now, I don't care if there are some pencil lines visible around the scene. That doesn't really bother me. But recently, I painted a painting that I was pretty happy with, except I got a little carried away with my pencil line up in the sky. I was drawing where I wanted this distant hill to be and I drew it too dark and it drove me crazy that I was overall pretty happy with the scene, but now I have this dark pencil line in the sky. Tip number five, use 100% cotton paper. And I know that that can be tricky because cotton paper is more expensive but it does make a big difference. If you're using lower quality grade paper, that's okay for doing sketches, practicing you know, certain things, certain skills. The good thing about cotton paper is that it can hold water longer. So it gives you more time to take advantage of the best part about watercolor, and that is painting wet into wet and achieving beautiful soft edges and transitions in color. And for that, we wanna use 100% cotton watercolor paper. Cotton paper is more durable and it's a lot more enjoyable to paint on. It stays wet longer. The surface is, you know, depending on whether you're using cold press or rough texture or hot press, getting comfortable with that surface on cotton paper is really important. If you can afford 100% cotton paper, go ahead and do that. It will make a difference in your paintings. Tip number six, don't outline. It's very tempting when we're painting to outline things. I think it's because we're used to doing that when we draw, creating an outline of a shape. But when we do that with paint in our paintings, it never looks good when you outline something in your scene. So painting around the perimeter of a building or painting around and kind of outlining a figure, it just never looks good. It always looks amateurish. It's unappealing to the eye. So avoid outlining when you're painting. Tip number seven, paint a little bit darker than you think you need to. What tends to happen in watercolor is we paint something and it looks good when the paint is wet and then it dries 
and it always dries lighter. I don't know the exact percentage on how much your colors or how much your values will fade from when it's wet to when it dries, but I think it's somewhere around 20%. I've heard Andy Evenson say, if it looks right when you paint it, then it's wrong. And I think that's a good way to think about it. As it dries, it's gonna fade and you want your values to look correct. So we need to compensate for drying and paint slightly darker in our scenes. Tip number eight is a fairly straightforward tip. Mix more paint than you think you're going to need. It's inevitable. You think you have plenty of paint on your palette, ready to go, and it goes a lot faster than you think, and you're out of paint and you're trying to mix, and your painting is drying up, and it's causing problems. Be proactive here and mix a little more paint than you think you need. I would rather waste a little bit of paint than mess up my painting when I'm trying to mix in the middle of a delicate wash and things are drying and it's frustrating. So plan ahead, mix a little more paint than you think you're going to need. Quick tip number nine, variety is key. We don't wanna paint a large section of our scene all in one color. We wanna mix it up. We wanna add some variety because variety equals interest. If one large area of your painting is all done in one color, in one value, it's going to become quite boring for the viewer. And we want to bring some more life into our paintings. We want to mix up the colors that we're using. We want to mix up our brush strokes. We don't want to do every mark in the same way with the same size brush because it becomes repetitive. We start painting in patterns and our painting becomes boring and lifeless. Add some variety and interest to your paintings. So tip number 10 might be the most important one, and that is don't rush. The trick with watercolor is it demands us to move fairly quickly because things are drying, especially in our middle value wash, where we're thinking about edge, color change, value, we're trying to make a large connected shape a lot of times. That's a lot of things to think about all at once. So we have to slow down and be present, but we can't move too slow where things are drying up and causing problems within our scene. Finding that balance between urgency and rushing I think is important. And also just in the flow of painting a watercolor, we don't want to rush getting into our darks of our scene when it's too early. The temptation is that when we are painting, we quickly want it to look like something. And in watercolor, because we are painting essentially in reverse with our lightest values to our darkest values, it might not look like much early on in the process. And the temptation is to jump ahead and put in our middle values and our darks when it's too early. So having a game plan in your painting is so important. Understanding what you're trying to accomplish each step along the way, in your first wash, in your second wash, in the finishing details of your scene. If we can remember what the goal of each step is and stick to our game plan, we're gonna have a much greater chance for success in our painting. Now, if you wanna know more about the phases of painting and the steps along the way, I've made some other videos about this. So you can check out my video on what to do in the first wash of your scene, what to do in the middle value shape and adding the details into your scene. So you can check out those videos if you haven't seen them. So those are my 10 quick tips to help you in your watercolor paintings. If you have another tip that you felt like should have been included in this list that I did not mention, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. And before you go, I wanted to mention, if you haven't checked out my free video lesson, how to avoid overworking your painting, take a look at it. You can follow the link below. You can get to it in my bio and Instagram. So I've gotten some really good feedback from this lesson. And this is a video lesson that helps address something that I had to work through quite a bit when I was learning how to paint watercolor. I talked through eight different tips to help you avoid overworking your painting. You can follow the link below Take a look at it and I hope it can help you out as well. So thank you for spending some time with me here today. I know that you could learn a lot about watercolor in so many different places and it means a lot that you are here watching my video and I really do appreciate it. So keep practicing and learning and moving forward in your watercolor journey and I will see you next time.